1 Samuel chapter 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines. In chapter 23, he had David there encircling and closing in. David's doomed. And the Lord sends the Philistines in to attack. And Saul has to leave. And I am told that this is one of the tactics, I believe, of Genghis Khan. He was surround the area and just moving slower, slowly, slowly, slowly. To everybody would be within bow shout of his army and then they would take over. But God protected David. And it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engi. That's where we left David off in verse 29 or 23. And Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel. Now with David's, now I'm taking 600, it said, you know, approximately 600. That would be five men of Saul for every one of David. So what Saul has for every man that David has 600, there would be five men of Saul. He wants David dead. And Israel, Jewish people going after a Jewish anointed king. And went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. Now that must have been interesting. You ever see some of those pictures of those, of those goats climbing those rocks? This would be your rock climbing in the Bible that people do as, as a sport. So nothing is going to stop Saul from venturing out to kill David, even with rock walls. And he came to the sheep coats. That's the only place that word shows up. It's a place where you keep sheep, take care of them. The ass herder is at the sheep coats. By the way, so that expression's in the Bible, hey, by the way where was a cave and Saul went in to cover his feet that would be the rest actually there's two things that people say he's going in to take a nap he's going into the rest or he's going in there to go potty he's inside a cave it's dark there are caves all over this area and they're dark you escape the sun by going in there it's cool and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. So guess what? Saul's going in his cave for privacy, whatever he's going to do. And David and his men are in that cave. And Saul doesn't know it. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy into thy hand. God never said that. Never did God tell David that you're going to kill Saul. But they want the, they, they want the battle reward that we killed the man that, that we're protecting David. We killed the man that was after him. That thou mayest do to him as it shall be seem good unto thee all right let's kill him let's do it however you want to do it you want to spear him you want to cut off his neck you want whatever you want to do david here's our opportunity then david arose and cut off the skirt of saul's robe privily thank you imagine these men that's it that's all you're going to do notice the skirt okay the man saw men wear skirts. It's part of the robe. Okay. No information there. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. David is honest. David is humble. David's going to acknowledge that this is his king that's been anointed by God. This is his father-in-law. This is his military leader, commander, that David is part, well, was part of the army. 
He cuts off the skirt, and then he's like, you know what? What did he do that for? And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. David submitted to authority, even though it was wicked. When have you ever heard David make fun or call Saul names because they didn't like, he did not like, no one liked the, the kingship or the rulership? And Saul was an evil, wicked man. The Bible records that he had an evil spirit and he's out for David with no particular reason. Recorded by his daughter, Michael. Recorded by his son, Jonathan. He's taken part in the priest's office that he should never have been. He lost the kingdom. He kills the priest. And David's upset because he cut the skirt of Saul. We've got Christians who had eight years of President Obama where all, everything filthy and everything vile to be said. That's not the character of David. You know, David had opportunity to do as he pleased to Saul. Whatever he wanted to do, he had his men for backing him. And he cut that skirt off, probably a little piece of, I don't even say how much. And then he felt bad. That wasn't his property. That was the dress of his leader. And he said, the Lord forbid I should do this thing unto my master, the wild, wicked king, the Lord's anointed. Samuel anointed him with oil twice into the office of the king to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is anointed from the Lord, Romans 13. That anointed of the Lord. Let's go to Romans 13. Let's see what the Bible says today. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. And Christians forget this. When they don't get who they want in the White House. And then when they do get what they want in the White House, oh, we're just happy as clams. Romans 13, 1. Now David said, anointed. 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. King Saul, president. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained. That is the same thing as anointed. Though no one puts oil upon the Queen of England, though no one puts oil upon the President of the United States or any other leader of any country, God says the leader of that nation, whether it be King, Queen, Prime Minister, whatever you call him, that's ordained. And ordained, we look at a church today with a pastor, they lay their hands on him. If that's the case, and that is a Bible thing to lay your hands on or put oil upon them, there are probably some countries that maybe do that. If you lay your hands on a man at a pulpit to send him forth in the ministry, and you call that ordained, and you give him paper, if God calls it ordained, and God calls it the same thing as David says, that this man is wicked, is anointed, that means that that man, whoever is in the office of the leadership of that country, of that state, of that county, of that city or town, or wherever you are in the world, know how vile he is, and Saul is vile, God says that man is ordained, so God has laid his hand on that man to be in that office. And rest assured that when we read Matthew 4, and I think it's Luke 4, that when Satan tempts Jesus Christ, he said, I will give you all this power if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus never rebuked the devil and said, no, you can't do that. It's mine. No, he never rebuked the devil. And if that man is of Satan, the evil spirit, and God knew what Saul would do, and David, the greatest type of Jesus Christ outside of Joseph, so that man is anointed. And he gets upset because he's close enough to Saul to, to rip or cut his, his clothing and never bats a bad mouth about him. 
Jonathan does. A lot of Christians are going to end up in the judgment seat of Christ and are going to find out their conduct to their leaders are terrible. So he says anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants. Now that's interesting. Because verse 4 says the men of David. Now these are his soldiers. They're also his servants. They done or do or will do anything that David tells them to do. With these words. So verse 6. He stops his man saying, you know what? Stop. That's the Lord's anointed <coughs> over there. And suffer them not to rise against Saul. They're ready. They're ready. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. He doesn't even know what's in that cave. Everybody meets David. Abiathar the priest. Jonathan the son of Saul. Here, Saul comes to David. He doesn't even know he's there. It's very, yeah. 600 men found, found him. him. Everybody's finding David. And Saul is here with David in this particular cave. And, and I've always wondered, like, I, I read more into the Bible, you know, real life. I don't think these men are, maybe they're whispering, hey, there he is, let's go get him. But the acoustics of a cave is it echoes. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. Whether he woke up or... I would assume he's sleeping. Yeah. How could he cut off his skirt without him knowing if he's just, yeah. just taking a poop? So we don't know how long this is going on. <laughs> David also rose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul. Wait a minute. Really? His offense against the king is, I, I ripped your clothes, and now I'm going to stand before you. And do you realize Saul has the power to take that man's head off? No questions asked, and he wants David dead. Cried and say, my lord, the king. Look at that. Title of respect. My lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. Respect. Now the man is not respectable, Saul, but he's the king. And David said to Saul, Wherefore, hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeks thy hurt. Saul, why are you listening to lies? Behold, this day thy eyes have seen how the Lord has delivered thee today unto my hand in the cave. God brought you in that cave where I was. How's that? Of all the caves and all the places again, God brought you here. Wouldn't you think this would be a kind of temptation of Genesis 22? I want to see what you're going to do, David. I want to see what you're going to do with your son. Abraham. Boy, it'd be amazing if David failed that test. And some bade me kill thee. <laughs> They're behind him. There are people told me to kill you. But my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord. For... He is the Lord's anointed, Romans 12, 19. Further, more, excuse me, moreover, my father, father-in-law, see ye, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I cut off the skirt of the robe and kill thee not. What's David doing now? Saul, do you see how close I got to you? I have a piece of your garment. 
If I could have got that close to your garment, I could have got that close to your heart, to your to your lungs, to your kidneys. Remember, he's got the sword of Goliath. And kill thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou huntest my soul to take it. I have done you no, no harm. This whole argument is started because. One. The women saying I killed more men than you. Two. You enter into the office that you weren't supposed to enter into. And God said he is finished with you. And I have been anointed to take your place. But I'm not going to kill you to get the throne. I'll wait for God to do that. Jonathan and I are our best buddies. We are lovers of each other's souls. I will take care of him even though that throne will be mine. What have I done to you, King, that is wrong? The Lord judged between me and thee, and the Lord avenged me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. I'm not going to kill you. As says the Proverbs of the ancients, first time that word shows up, wickedness proceeded from, wic from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. If I do wicked, Saul, I'm going to get wicked back. One of the things I've always said, if the Lord ever gave me a church, I don't want people from another church. Because if I steal people from another church, there'll be a time if the Lord gives me a church, I don't know, but if he gives me a church, people are going to steal them from me. It's called reaping and sowing. And the great mercy that he shows Saul, the great mercy that God shows David, and his two great sins. And then when his son is chasing him, Absalom. After whom the king is Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? <laughs> an unclean animal? Maybe a Gentile? <laughs> After a flea? There's only two places that flee. Chapter 26, verse 20. Let's go there. And it's David again. So this is this is a famous expression of David, 26, 20. Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth. He pleaded to Saul again. The face of the Lord. For the king of Israel come out to seek a flea. You know how small a flea is? And you just got the Philistines to deal with. The Philistines are the enemy. They keep coming into our area. And you're coming after one little Jewish kid? Young man? Go after a dead dog. The Philistines. So what we see again, 2620, we're going to come with a meeting of Saul and David again. David. The Lord therefore be judge. And judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thy hand. Will you stop it, Saul? You're driving me crazy. And he did that back at Achish's door. Literally. Why can't, why can't we, what is your, you know, I'd be much duty of service to Israel if you put me back in the camp and they sing their songs. It's not my fault. I'm not going to serve that throne. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this the voice of my son, son-in-law, David? Now why would he say that? Can you imagine how much David has aged by now with being on the run? He's had battles. He's living out in the wilderness. His hair is probably mangled. His beard is probably... And he's just living in caves, living in rocks, living out in the fields. He's not properly groomed. 
And Saul is probably caused gray hairs and all kinds of things and wrinkles upon this guy. He's looking at him like, is that David? And what he's doing is, if David comes to Saul and says, Saul, hey, it's me, David. And Saul's looking at David like, man, what happened to you? Sure, Paul. Is this the voice, my son, son-in-law? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. 26.1. Oh. Okay. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I. Get that. For thou hast rewarded me good. You didn't kill me. Now, what if it was reversed? What if David was taking a nap and Saul came in and found him? Whereas I have rewarded thee evil. Now, he just sunk his goose. Because chapter 26, we're going to be doing this again. He just admitted before David and God, David, you're right, <laughs> and I'm wrong. But that's not going to stop him. And again, don't think, oh, Saul's saying he's sorry. He repented. He, he, he People repent. And, they, you know, they said this prayer. They're, no, 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 no. This is an ungodly I'm, I was caught. Remember, David's men are over here. Saul's men are over here. David's holding that robe, and Saul looks like an idiot before everybody. And imagine the thoughts that are going through both camps. Wow, did you see that? David had complete opportunity, and all he did was cut his robe. Did you hear what Saul said? He said he was wrong and David was right. Now that's going to go through everybody. But there's one thing military men do. They talk. And it goes through the ranks. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dwelt well with me. For as much as when the Lord has delivered me into thy hand, thou killest me not. Oh, but if, you had, if it would have been reversed. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go away, go well away? Saul, you are not an enemy to, to David. David's an enemy to you. You just proclaimed before God, and before, if I found you in that cave sleeping, I'd kill you. Because you're my enemy, David. David, you found me in that cave. You didn't kill me. So before everybody, Saul is announcing his guilt and the innocence of David. Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto, uh, un, unto me this day. And now, behold, watch this. I know well that thou shalt surely be king. There's a prophecy by Saul. He knows David's the king. And that's what's angering him. And there he goes. This is the second time. He said it before. And Jonathan has said it. And that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thy hand. So why are you going to try to kill him again? Because he doesn't want it to happen. Swear now. And that's not custom. It's an oath. Therefore unto me by the Lord. So help me Lord. So help me Jehovah. Now watch the trust that Saul is putting in David. And yet you can't put no trust in Saul. That thou will not cut off my seed after me. And he won't. He'll take care of Jonathan's son. And that thou will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And he won't. There are a word, children of Saul. Now, because of the attack that Saul done on one particular area, they claimed the sons of Saul to be hung in retribution of what Saul has done. But David spares Jonathan's son. So make an oath, David, 
that when you are the king, you will not destroy my family. And David swore to Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men got them up unto the hold. It ain't over. You may think it's a, you may, oh, good, you know, you may be thinking, you know, here's a guy, he said prayer, he saved, blah, 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 blah. No, he's not. Saul was just made to look like an idiot before a bunch of people. And Samuel did that to Saul. Oh, please come to some people and see that, you know, I, I still honor the Lord. Oh, no. See, Saul is a people pleaser. He doesn't want to be humbled before the people. He doesn't want to be a laughing stock. And we've seen that before. It's just words. 